Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 1, Lesson 4, Practice Problem Review is on parallelograms. Let's investigate the features and area of parallelograms. In Problem 1, we'll start off by selecting all parallelograms, and for each figure that is not selected, explain how you know it is not a parallelogram. We'll start off by selecting the parallelograms, and those are B and C. Parallelograms must have a couple of features. One, four sides. The opposite sides. These things are equal in length and parallel and for the opposite angles they're congruent they're equal and so if we go through and then say okay well then why is A not a parallelogram we look at those two sides and go, okay, for A, opposite sides not parallel. You could also say that these opposite sides here and here are not even the same length. It's a trapezoid. <laughs> In D, now, why isn't D a parallelogram? Well, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five sides. So that's an obvious reason. And in, in E, one, two, three sides, that can't possibly be a parallelogram. It's a right triangle. Let's continue on. In question two. Decompose and rearrange this parallelogram to make a rectangle. Okay. Didn't ask us to find the area, just to decompose. And So if I draw a line down here, here, and here, and go, okay, this is a bit of a triangle that I'm going to take and move. Where can I take and move that? How about over there. So now I have a really nice rectangle. That happens to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine units by one, two, three, four, five units. If I wanted to find that area, not that it asked me to, but I could take 5 times 9 to get 45 square units. Again, you didn't have to in this question, but it's a little bonus area for you there. All right, then question 2. Oh, wow, hello. What is the area of the parallelogram? Explain your reasoning. Did it. Check. Done. Hello. All right, let's go to problem 3. Find the area of the parallelogram. All right. Well, if we take this triangle and slide it down over here, we now have a 10 centimeter by 3 centimeter rectangle. And if I take 3, and multiply it by 10, I get a solution of 30 square centimeters. Then, question four, explain why this quadrilateral is not a parallelogram. Well, I'm going to lock in on this side and this side and say that the opposite sides are not all parallel. And for that matter, they're not the same length either. Uh, 
All right. Let's continue on to question five. Find the area of each shape and show your reasoning. Let's go to this first one. This looks a little bit complicated, but I think it's possible to break this down here. And so let's do that. Let's take this two by two triangle here, and let's move this one right here, where I go two down and two over, and create then a rectangle right here, or I'm sorry, a square even, right here. That's a two by two square. So I've moved that one. Then, what if I take this triangle here, that's two by two, and rotate it over here. So now I have this square, that's two by two. And in fact, after I do all that, you have a couple different options. You have all these little two by two squares. So you could say, all right, I have two times two is four, and there's three of those things. So I can multiply by three to get 12. Or you could recognize, wait a minute, now I actually have, the way we did this, just so happened to get a rectangle. And so what is this rectangle? It's two by six, and so I could take two times six and get 12. Either way, anyway, you'll get 12 square units for your area of this one. What about the next one? Let's deal with each triangle separately. Let's look at this as a triangle that will break apart. And let's look at the triangle on the right as something we're going to have to break apart. Well, how can we break it apart? Let's start with the small one. What if I take this triangle here and I move it over here. How would that look? Well, one down, three over, that becomes a nice rectangle right here. It so happens to be four by one. Then, what if I take my next triangle and I cut it here. And so I'm going to take this over here and move it down there. When I do that, I then end up with that moving down over here and have a three by five rectangle. And so now I have a one by four rectangle. So that area is going to be one times four to get four and a five by three rectangle. So five times three is equal to 15. Add those two areas up and I get 19 square units for my solution. So for those shapes, it was about breaking those down into different squares or rectangles from the triangles we were given. And our last question today, question six, find the area of the rectangle with each set of side lengths. Well, area for a rectangle is equal to the length of the rectangle times the width. And so our first question here, five and, or five inches and one third inches, it's going to be five times one third, which is simply five thirds square inches or inches squared. 
you could also record this answer as one and two-thirds square inches. Same solution. What about the next one? Five inches and four-thirds inches. We have five, which really is just five over one, times four-thirds inches, which will get you twenty-thirds square inches. And if you wanted to write this 20 divided by 3, well, that gets you about, well, exactly, really, 6 and 2 thirds square inches. 5 halves and 4 thirds. Okay. 5 halves times 4 thirds. And I know there's many ways to multiply fractions here. You could multiply straight across and then simplify it. It's certainly one way, but you get 10 thirds square inches, which is the same thing as three and a third square inches. And lastly, we have seven sixths and six sevenths. That's just gonna be 42 over 42, which is simply one square inch. That is it for this grade six, unit one, lesson four, practice problem review on parallelograms. Good luck.